Good all PMC fans, Josh PH Games here and welcome to the recaps for week two and of course I am not alone. What's good PMC, it's your boy Dermot Murray Pink Niner here. Yes, we are finally here for week two. Sorry about week one guys, sadly we couldn't get together, complications and all that, but we are here. Week two has happened and the matches are damn sure interesting. We have a lot in store for you so I hope you're excited as much as we are. The first match up here is the Lawrence Town Flames versus the Crystal Crocodiles, and I really enjoyed this lead matchup. It was the extra drill versus the Jirachi. Um, this uh, this helps out the Lawrence Town Flames a lot, pressuring the Palisades team, uh, the Jirachi, to either swap out um, first, uh, or he that the Jirachi, depending on the item, dies to EQ, or uh, sets up his own rocks to also pressure the Lawrence Town Flames. It's, Look at this team. Look, the only hazard removal I see is the Coco and the Mega Aerodactyl. But he did, in, he, at the end, he did switch into the Mega Venusaur. The Extra Joe sets up the rocks and um, help. And looking also, the he doesn't, the Palisades don't have their own hazard removal. Like, none. There, he has no options. So, these rocks are here to stay unless. He forces the Talon Flames to, unless the Power Sands, uh, forces the Talon Flames to uh, defog their own hazard away, which I feel like that's um, not possible. Um, now it's just uh, extra drill weak, trying to weaken the Venusaur with the lead seed. The Venusaur goes ahead, crits the lead seed. Uh, the Talon Flames in the third turn did an amazing play, swapping from. The Venusaur, who predicted an EQ or an HP fire, going into, uh, I believe, Mega Aerodactyl or Weezing. I forgot, but it was a great prediction on the Lawrence Town Flames. And then it became all back and forth. Uh, the Town, the Palace Sands went to the Lycan Rock to pressure the Mega Aerodactyl to swap into Astrodrome. And then the the like the like rock swaps into Jonathan. Jonathan tries to wall his entire team. The great thing about this is Extra Drill had the item Aya Papa Berry, which is a nice tech, allowing the Extra Drill to one v one said Jonathan and um, defeating the the Venusaur, the Mega Venusaur, and, no, and Jirachi, Jirachi and Lycan Rock. My bad. Um. Then the Lycan Rock comes, uh, KOs the, no, not KO, it revenges the Extra Drill, because the Extra Drill is like at 10 HP or somewhere around there. He goes into Mega Aerodactyl to revenge that Lycan Rock. Uh, that Lycan Rock could be either banded or it could be baiting that he does not have the Elso Rock. I love the fact that he did switch in his Garbantula. Um... Put, putting pressure to the talent face, making the talent face think he was scarfed. So he was able to thunder the wheezing and KL the wheezing. But unfortunately, his pan backfired, giving the Necrozma the weakness policy boost from the bug buzz and allowing the Necrozma to autonomize and sweep the rest of his team. How do you think of this match? I think this match was amazing. Yeah, this was an amazing. This was an amazing match. I had I seen a lot of good players here. Uh, Necrozma was absolutely amazing with the weakness policy. This just was a really good match. Garchomp did some amazing work here. I know what he can do as a coach uh, from the IBL, and this guy does seriously good work. I respect him so much for that uh, Necrozma play and that Escadrill item, the Eye of Papa. That. I feel I feel the Aya Papa item really helped out uh, Extra Joe tremendously when when we wanted that um, the Jonathan I feel like Jonathan did not have the Scald or the Surf for some reason uh, I feel like it's because since he has a Cantonian Nine Tails that the the it won't do anything to Extra Joe I think the Sun was up during around there I don't quite remember but I do. I do uh, like the fact that Extra Drill won v won the Jellison. And I I don't know why he didn't recover with Jellison, but that's beyond me. Now, what's the next matchup? 
The next matchup we have for you guys is the Oregon Ducklets taking on the Belicia Don fan of El Cesar. This match was an absolutely interesting match. The Oregon Ducklets bought them Celesteela, Mega Charizard X, Robombi, Lucario, Mamo Swine, and Armaldo, whilst the Belicia Don fan bought them Rotom Heat, Nido King. Needle Queen, sorry, Mew, Milk Tank, Mega Pidgeot, and Dragonite. This was a very, very interesting matchup. I gotta admit, uh, first off, one thing I want to mention from this matchup the absolute jammiest of jammy gits. Double Protect. My god. <laughs> I mean, like, at that point in the game, you just think to yourself, like, God damn! I lost a double protect. How can I? How can I live with myself after that one? <laughs> yeah, as I saw, the brush dump had they had so much trouble trying to break down the Celesteela, but Celesteela weakened the brush, the Dolphin's team, to a point where Lucario can defeat the rest of his team. Yeah. That's that, it was a bizarre it was it was a mixture of luck and outright skill. The one play well, two things I like. One, the the brush dumpfans brought physical Needle Queen for the Rebombi because Rebombi has the Rebombi quiver dance. And nobody Needle Queens ran um special, but this was physical for this case and I, I think it was Fire Punch. He had Fire Punch for a specially defensive Celesteela, which the Celesteela can defeat the Pidgeot one-on-one. -on -one. And I also like that nice switching that Lars made um, with the Psyche MZ from the Rebombi. The Rebombi had Psyche MZ for the Neo Queen. He made a really nice sack to that Rebombi, which I thought was really nice. Um, but the Rotom also like really heavily pressured that Ar armaldo so the armal since it looks like the armaldo is like his only hazard removal on this team pressuring him to try to get rid of hazards because his team's kind of weak to hazards he has the zardax and the rebombi which are both weak to rocks uh and i think that's all i like from that yeah, this was quite an interesting match. I mean, the Oregon Ducklets, again, picking up another victory here. I mean, this team, I wasn't expecting them to go uh, uh, too far, but, like, this team are doing so well at the moment, 2-0. And, oh, and, like, I was making comments during the draft about, like, the Heliolisk uh, pickup for this, this is not a Sun team, and Heliolisk, in my opinion, only works on the Sun team. But the Ducklets are doing amazing work here. Yeah, and I, and I just want to put this out. The Celesteela had a really nice tech, uh, uh, Miracle, uh, no, Metal Sound. It had Metal Sound and Air, and air Slash. I really like that tech right there. Yeah. Anyway, let's get on to our next match. Now, what's, what's our next, what's our, what's the next matchup? The Melbourne Storm Throws took on the Portland Polywags. The Melbourne Storm Throws bought with them Topu Fini, Ladias, um, and Moltres, Gengar, Mega Akron, and Gardevoir. While uh, the uh, Portland Polywags bought with them Garchomp, Mega Gallade, Nido King, a Lullen Persian, Regular Rotom, and Snorlax. This was quite an interesting matchup. I mean, we saw um, Topu Fini destroy competition, picking up four kills. This thing was absolutely amazing. This thing just destroyed practically everything. Uh, Snorlax causing Latios to eat his berry to stop dark uh, to stop dark type moves as well. Um, Moltres destroyed toxicing out the Snorlax so the Snorlax couldn't do too much, but it was just a really interesting match. What do you think of this one? I thought this was like, I feel like the Portland Polywags were so easily pressured. This team, like he, I feel like the the Polywags had to preserve the Needle King so well, but based on the Stormthrow's matchup, he really couldn't save the Needle King for the Finny. 
once the Finney started signing up, it was over from there. And <laughs> my God, Finney with four kills. That's you would never see a Finney um put in so much work like this. You would never see that happen. No. It's, uh, it's, Really you amazing. I mean, the one thing I do want to mention: turn one kill. Literally, he started with a guard jump. He didn't have that guard jump at the end of turn two. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh man, this was a cra crazy, crazy matchup. The storm throws really had the upper hand with that Finny once, and the fact that he sacked his guard jump turn one, I feel like that was a bit of a misplay on the Portland Polywag's end. Because the guard jump couldn't put in the work once he got rid of or weakened Finney and and weakened the uh, Lavios a bit, but but damn that it was a beatdown of the century. Yeah, with the top of Finney. Yeah, this it was a great team, but I do want to mention we might not be seeing this Finney anymore. But that's not for us to talk about. That's for the transact trades and transactions people to talk about. Yeah, yeah, that's you. You'll find out once uh, once you once it happens. Anyways, well, the next matchup is the next matchup is um, the Br uh, Brandon's team of the Trenton Fundoras taking on another IBL counterpart in uh, Phantom Base, coach of the New York Cosmogs. The Trenton Fundoras bought with them like Rock Day. Mega Marwal, Hooper Young Brown, Porygon 2, Aquilid, T Serena, as well, and the New York Cosmogs brought with them Weavile, Metagross, Blissey, Talon Flame, Mega Lopunny, and Quillfish. This was quite an interesting match. Mega Marwal. This thing is just oh my god, this thing is this thing you can see why this is banned in most leagues. This just destroys. Yes, what what in this match, personal for me, it was one of my favorite matches. Be just watching it, it gave you so many hyped moments because there were so many plays that had to happen, and the Thunderers played so correctly. The the turn one fake out play, the Lycan Rock, uh, I believe, was Focus Sash. This I feel like this Lycan Rock was guaranteed to sell up rocks. Like if you, if you saw the steadfast, the fast steadfast, meaning if you get flinched, you you boost your speed. It's like Rock would have outsped that Megalopony and set up the rocks. He did. I know the the Cosmox did fear the Zen headbutt coming, which is why he switched into the Mega the Metagross. But damn, no, he swapped into the Quillfish. My bad. And the wow, the that turn one play really got to be excited. Then the Thunderous went into the Mega Mawile, uh, just removing the Corefish entirely. Corefish really trying to weaken the Mega Mawile, but there's a reason, like you said, there's a reason why this mod is banned. One, because it's fat, and two, because it hits hard. It's a literal definition of a tank, and it, it just shows right here that. This quillfish was having troubles killing the Mawile. Then, then he had a uh, megalopony, megalopony trying to hump jump kick the the uh, the Arachnid coming in, weakening the Arachnid. Then comes the, the Hoopa, which is it looks like when, the way he brought it in could be scarfed. So it knocks out Lopony on a switch. Then all these plays happen. He goes to Town Flame. Then he goes Metagross. He goes Metagross doubling into the, the Lopony for on the Mawile. And then the Blissey comes. The Blissey comes, looking like he she's about to stall the the rest of the match since the rest of this team is poisoned. And uh, but Mega Mawile, proving to be a monster, play roughing the the play roughing. The hell out of that Blissey. But even though it took a ton. Now, this is the best play, in my opinion. The Metagross was predicting a Sucker Punch. So, and he clicked Agility. The Mega Mawile won the 50-50 clicking knockoff. That's what, that's what stopped the Metagross. 
from sweeping and preventing Mega and Mega Ball Wild not risking a sucker punch. Then the last turn, unfortunately, the Hackscocks came and let the, tell told the Town Flame to whisk the Willow Mist, Willow Mist, giving Mawa another kill. This was, like I said, personally one of my favorite matches. Mega Mawa, just putting in the absolute work. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I must admit, I mean, like when I saw that Town Flame came in, I just thought to myself, my God, that thing is just like literally going to go down to rocks, and it lost like. It lost like 75%, maybe even 80% of its health coming in off rocks. <laughs> he was usually pressured. Like his, um, he didn't have any hazard removal. He probably didn't realize that the um, the rocks, he didn't realize that the Lycan rock had a way to get rocks reliably. Which which really surprised me that he, had, that he figured out that what Steadfast does. Nobody uses Steadfast. That's the one ability that people don't like to use. But he put it into effect this match, and it really worked out for him. I'm so proud of... Yeah, I mean, um, Ste Steadfast is a good ability to use. I mean, because Mega Lapony, one of its choice moves is Fake Out. It is a good Fake Out lead, and if you can get off a of Fake Out, you can really do some good work on the flinch to stop to stop like any first-turn place. But it looks like in this match, it really backfired against him, which really cost to him and his time flame to actually put in the work. But a good Anyways, four, a yeah, good four win for the Trenton for Doris. Brandon is moving on again with good wins here, but let's get on to our next one. The next match. The next match is the um, New South Wilmers versus the Colorado Rapidash. The New South Wilmers bought with them Landorus T, Zirkatry, Sloking, Shaman, Mega Caesar and Kamoo, whilst V Colorado Rapidash bought with them Zapdos, Mega Blastoise, Arcanine, Reggie Ice, uh, Catania and Mimikyu. This was quite an interesting matchup. I mean, Zirkatry, this thing did some serious work. I mean, I played with Zirkatry before. I know what this one could do. It is it is a scary mon. Yeah, it, is, it seems to me that Zirkatry really um, put in the, the work in this match, getting three KOs and no deaths, meaning, meaning that he did indeed revenge kill all the Pokemon. Now, I just want to let you know, uh, we, sorry about the Landris missed the typo. Um, anyways, there, oh, yeah, I, there was, I, yeah, I, it's, yeah, the you missed, was in? Yeah, it was, it's an O, not an I. Oh, right, the, sorry, sorry, my spelling, uh, spelling is bad, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> but it, you know what it is. Yeah. You, you know, know what, what I'm trying to say it. here. I did the layouts, but like you know what I'm trying to say here. That's a Landorus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, but don't worry. Don't worry about it. But yeah, it looks like he Zirkatry didn't put in the work. Uh, he had nothing to KO the Zirkatry. Um The priority was pretty lacking in this match. Um looks like the, it seems to me that the Mimikyu did die from the Mega Scizor. Uh and Zirkatry just picked up KO, put up Telgo, put uses Z hypnosis and just ran house. Uh, we all we all know what Zirkatry does. This thing just puts in the amazing amount of work and you cannot underestimate the power of Zirkatry. One seventy one special attack. Can't doubt that. You can't. No, and if you add things like Z hypnosis to this thing, this thing will destroy lives. Yeah, this thing takes the lives. This thing just takes lives. Like you, you, you can't miss prep for this, or you're just, you're just gonna get destroyed. Well, not actually destroyed. This guy didn't get uh, the the rapid dash just didn't get destroyed, but he did had trouble with his archery, so couldn't do anything about that. He had no revenge color, unless it was scarf cartana, which I don't think would have beaten his archery anyways. Zirkatry has decent amount of bulk. <clears throat> but, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and go to the next matchup. Now, our next matchup is the 
Pittsburgh Empoleons taking on the Sydney Crocodiles. The Sydney Crocodiles bought with them Topobulu, Umbreon, Ditto, uh, Slowbro, uh, Mega Kangaskhan, and Cryogonal, whilst the um, well, whilst the Pittsburgh Empoleons bought them Zygarde 50, Tornadus, uh, Cantolian Raiju, Mega Diance and Polion, the only team to actually pick up their mascot, and <laughs> Heracross. Uh, this was quite an interesting matchup. I mean, uh, Mega Diance, this thing is scary as hell. It can do some serious, it can do some serious work, and it did, it did do some quite good work here, picking up three kills. This was really good here today. Yeah, uh, like this, this is one of the closest matchups in this week. Like we're getting to week two, and this is one of the closest already. Um, and Pauline is winning two and zero. The the Mega Diancy is just has like the top. The Sydney Cricket does has no switch into a Mega Diancy with this team that he brought. Like he could, yeah, he could have ran Scarf Ditto, but like there was no one move that the Diancy could lock that the Ditto could lock into to defeat the. The his team, if you locked yourself into Moonblast and Polyans right there, but yeah, this this team he actually did put in the work with DNT and Heracross. Heracross picking up two kills, the, um, winning the matchup uh, for his team. Tornado's T uh, probably did put in the work, uh, giving some damage to his team. But at least, like, he had a, the Heracross. Heracross was too threatening for this Crocodile Zone, right? And, and he, like, he, the Crocodile got two, getting two kills. That, that surprises me, to say the least. Crocodile, I mean, as far as I can tell from watching this matchup, uh, I honestly question both of the kills that it got as sacks, but I'm not exactly sure on that, so I'm not going to make comments or question the plays if i'm not sure it's a sack i'm not gonna put sack but like i'm i'm saying they these kills could have been sacks yeah they could have been sacks, but to a cryogonal um i mean at least uh the, the pittsburgh and polyons did win at the end with the hair across yeah clean sweep and i do want to say one thing before we get on to the next match Thank you, Sydney Crocodiles, for finally bringing Imposter Ditto. You didn't bring it last week. And I was thinking to myself, like, why the hell is Ditto even here if it's not Imposter? Like, impo Ditto has to be Imposter for it to even work as an effective one in draft format. Some, some, he, he or probably someone probably misgen his Pokemon. So I, I don't think I can blame him for the, the misgen or breed, breed. Sorry, sorry, breed. Don't, don't bark at me in the comments. <laughs> it's uh, fine. Next it's, <laughs> as long as Felicify <laughs> isn't watching this video, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> oh, it doesn't. <laughs> next match. The next matchup we have for you guys is the New York Metagross, another brand new team joining this week. Uh, and they took on the Mastodon Gastodons. I love that team name. I really do. But the New York Metagross bought with them Heatran, Torterra. Uh, Greninja, uh, Mega Alteria, Crocodile, and Noivern, whilst the Mastodon Gastrodons bought with them Kieran Black, Blaziken, Fundorus, uh, I, uh, Floor, just Mega Steelix, and Licky Licky. Uh, one thing I gotta say about this matchup Torterra. This, honestly, Torterra is like the lowest of the lowest tier 5 grass types. And it did amazing work here today. Yeah, the fact that when I saw when I saw that Torterra, I'm like, I, I, I the when you hear Torterra, the one item you would never think of is Scarf, and that's what this Torterra is. And it actually helped them out in the end. Now, turn one, Epic was pressured. The Greninja was there to sell the spikes. And I love the fact he had Poisonium Z Greninja just to KO the Forges, which really worked out because that removes the hazard removal and has his uh, Toxic Spike still up. I like the prediction with the Noivern on his uh, Licky Licky switch in. 
the Neuvern chipping down the Licky Licky helps. The one thing I question is the fact that he tried to click taunt on the Licky Licky when and Licky Licky had oblivious. I'm not sure if he didn't know this or not, but most people sometimes people draft Licky Licky because of the fact it's a wish pressure that cannot get taunted. I'm not sure if he misclicked or he forgot about that, but he it did he did have to go back and forth with the Licky Licky because of that. Like he let he allowed the Licky Licky to reliably wish protect on that turn. Um, but damn, Scarf Torterra. I, I can't get over the fact he has Scarf Torterra to pressure the Mastodon's team, the Mastodon Gastrodon's team, to allow the Kirkdal to revenge the Thunderous. I, I thought this match was really amazing, and it went more to the Metagross' favor. Even though that little misclick right there, and, and I mean... I question it, but if he forgot that Licky Licky gets oblivious, then that to me, then I, that could be understandable. People sometimes forget um, what Pokemon's abilities are, but yeah, I, I really like this. The Torterra getting three kills. That thing is a monster. Yeah, that thing is a, a literal monster. I mean, it's my mon of the week this week. I mean, I know that oh. I, I shouldn't really be saying that, but like, it is it is a literal monster. It is my mon of the week. I mean, for a tier five grass type to be doing that kind of work, wow. I yeah, hey, we may not do Pokemon of the week, but we both have to agree that is the Pokemon of the week. Scarf Torterra. That if we had a heat of the week, that would be the pick. Out that would be the mon I would pick because you would never like I said many times you would never think Scarf on a slow tank like this that. Wow, I'm happy about that. Well, let's get on to our last game. Good win for the Metagross here. And the last game, we're just going to come out and talk about it because we didn't see this match. We have no replay to go off uh, for ourselves. We have no video on the channel for it to go off ourselves again. So we have literally nothing to go off, but it is in the books so we do have to cover it here in the recaps. The Carolina Pyros, I got that name wrong last week uh, when I was recording the week one recaps that never happened, uh, um, took on the Jersey Weaviles, the Carolina Pyros brought with them Landorus I, Cresselia, Fortress, um, Mega Pizza, Electros, Kirum, Regular, and the Jersey Weaviles brought with them Mega Gap, uh, Mega Glalie, Glalie, yeah, yeah Mega Glalie, Celebi, Pinsa, uh, Raikou, um, Bravery, and Klefki. Uh, first off, Mega Pinsa destroyed. Really well done here. Yeah, uh, let's, let's let's point out that this was a Pinsa versus Mega Pinsa match, and we all know, obviously, the Pinsa team lost. The mega, I f the mega pincer looks like it did so so much work. Look, also the Krefki was weakened to a point where Kieran could just click ice beam. The Pyro is really trying their best to get that nice and powerful 6-0 win, but unfortunately, the Raikou was able to pick off the mega pincer. By the way, the Landers, uh, the Landers eye is indeed sheer force, meaning like the the. Pyro, the Weavile switching to the Pyro's uh, Lando is indeed the Braviary or the Celebi, whether you, whatever you want to look at it. But Mega Pinscher just really clean sweep this entire team. I'm not sure if it sets up a setup with Swords Dance, but like Joseph said, there there is no game that we could have watched. They forgot to put the code or something. There's, but they forgot to put the replay code up on the. There's no, there's not even a video on the on the coaches' channels about this match, but we do know this match happened based on the uh, the, the stats chat. So yeah, plus we got the battle stats, so we could look it up. But yeah, we get we, this 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 team was heavily pincer, um, heavily weakened by pincer, cleaned up, and the Raik the Raikou was the only mod that could step up to the pincer. I feel like. He could have swapped into the pincer to begin with. 
um, based on these stats, he could have went to uh, Raikou and revenge the pincer. But then again, he had the Lando that he could switch into. So I, I don't think I could blame him for for that. But it, it, he was just he couldn't do anything to the power Mega Pincer and Lando got and Kiram. Uh, and I just gotta say, even though I, I love Kiram, the, the, I'm just glad he put in the work. Yeah, Mega Pincer is an amazing one. If it can set up and there aren't, if it can set up with Swords Dance, if it can come in when there's no rocks on the field, then Mega Pincer can destroy people's lives. But the fact is, if there are rocks up, Mega Pincer will probably die to those rocks. Yeah, bug flying may not be the best type, but he has area lay, which really boosts the viability of Mega Pincer. Mega Pincer is just a threat as it is i it's just a really massive threat it, it, it just wrecks through unprepared teams and it looks like the weavals were ill prepared for mega pincer and they had to suffer for that yep but that is week two so uh let me know what you thought of week two in the comment section down below. Of course, go and check out all the coaches. Their uh, links to their channels are down in the description below. And of course, keep an eye on this channel because that's where all you get all the analyst content as the weeks go on. And of course, check out me and Wamar for uh, recaps. We will be back and we have our own channels too. So go and check those out as well. But until next time, I'm Juice PH Games. And one more. And we're out. See you again. Peace out.